Working Academy Fund. Medvedev's four-day working week is for slaves. A six-hour working day is for fighters by Professor Alexander Zoltov. Здравствуйте, уважаемые товарищи. Продолжается эпопея. Hello, dear comrades. The so-called four-day working week story continues. As you got to know, Dmitry Medvedev had requested the Ministry of Labor and Social Development to estimate this proposal. So, some questions arise, because it's interesting that Dmitry Medvedev spoke at the Congress of the International Labor Organization, we can say at the International Forum, to this question already. And then he asked to estimate it post factum. Did he think of what he had been speaking in public? I think that a serious politician should think first and then speak. All right. Sometimes a man wants to say something good and proves it with some estimates. I think that Medvedev's request is to be done easily. Why so? I don't mean that the Ministry of Labor and Social Development will just do it. As all sensible persons, they should use scientific knowledge, trade union and political practice where this assessment was given a long time ago. Here we take the scientific assessment of our attitude to the compression of a working week, meaning a 40-hour working week divided in four days. We have a monograph known by many readers here. I'll just let myself to read the summary of all the analysis, which will be very useful to the Ministry of Labor and Social Development, I'm sure. They will not have to look for scientific base long. And this monograph, Working Day Reduction as a Basis for the Modern Economical Development, written by many authors, including Professor Zolotov and Professor Popov, it is written. Thus, today for the industrially developed countries, the following system of labor-saving usage in manufacturing attained on the basis of labor productivity increase is typical. Reduction of industrial workers is a priority form. The increase of free time of the rest of the workers goes much slower than the reduction of employment in social manufacturing. First of all, the additional free time of workers is used to increase the time of vacations, weekends and holidays, whereby average annual amount of working hours per worker is decreased. Cumulative effect of this reduction decreases substantially the time of real work life. Average amount of a working week decreases much slower than the amount of complex elements of the system of working activity periods. The slowest tempo of reduction is characteristically a typical work day, duration of which no longer corresponds to providing with free developing of the workers. An eight hour work day is considered to be normal only legally. Such usage of work time saving does not exclude the opportunity of development of workers within the limits of spare time, and of course, this development takes place. At the same time, the actual way of realization of labor saving in manufacturing without satisfying the key role of the workday in the system of the working activity periods prevents strongly every day's rising of the level of workers' skills, their participation in management, physical training, etc. Saving all division of labor, it slows down economical development. That's the scientific assessment of the meaning of pressing 40 hours in four days. That's why there is no need to look for it long. And I want to make the task of the ministry easier, because not so many authors have been written about the reduction of a work day, a work week, the amount of hours spent on a work life. These authors are representatives of the Working Academy Fund 
and the Working Party of Russia. Here I could mention Professor Popov, Professor Kazionov, and Professor Doctor of Economy Oleg Mazur. People watching this video are able to use the computer and have an access to the Internet. Dear comrades, do an experiment. Type in the search engine workday reduction, work time reduction, articles and monographs. What will you find out? You'll find two types of sources. The first one is articles and monographs of representatives of the Working Academy Fund alone. Check it. And the other one is legal instrument references, comments on the labor code. Legal experts interpret the basis for work time reduction, etc. Nothing else can be found. So it's very easy to estimate it scientifically. There are no so many scientific sources. There's no doubt about the fact that the sources are scientifically in-depth researched, because we don't do it on the instructions of the Prime Minister, who spoke two months ago and then requested someone to estimate something. We've been doing it throughout our scientific life, because the working class requested us to find out how to improve its life. So the working day reduction is one of the basic improvements of the working class state. Our scientific researches and practice are occupied with them. This book is based on the experience of the Western countries. And what is to be said about some specific conditions in Russia? They always say that there are some specific conditions in Russia. I want to pay attention of our spectators at a splendid video launched not long ago by Mikhail Popov, the president of the Working Academy Fund, doctor of philosophy, professor, co-chairman of the Ideological Commission of the Working Party of Russia. This video has more than 80,000 views. There's a huge interest not only in this topic, but in the person, because Professor Popov doesn't speak without thinking. He is guided by lots of knowledge and researches he made in science due to Marxist and Lenin's line. We used to comment these ideas at the website news.ru. This short comment got more than 250 millions of views for a short time. Without saying there is an assessment of what happens in Russia. And no doubt they must not compress a working week, put in force a 10-hour working day because it will make a huge damage to a worker, thus to the whole Russia. I will not go further with this idea. You may all study it by yourself. I'll just show some more facts on what Mikhail Popov says because we have such experience in Russia. And I believe that maybe today's government tries to make something like the previous government called Soviet tried to make. In 1960 it was made. They just compressed a working week. There was a 40-hour working week that was turned from a six-day into a five-day working week with two weekends. But instead of seven working hours, you got eight and one hour less on Friday. And it's on my memory, and I was a witness that with this news, people were happy and children had the joy. Let us see what resulted due to this decision, considering this experience. It turned out that already in 10 years, people having tested the new system saw a severe decrease in job satisfaction of industrial workers, because extra time was added to these 8 hours. Why so? Just because if people are ready to work one hour more than before, maybe they are ready to work two hours more. The way is known, the first step is done. You cannot say A without saying B. 
you gave up a 7 hour workday. If you like an 8 hour workday, then be pleased with 10. During the last Soviet period, extra time increased strongly, thus the working class regressed. Sometimes they said that an extra work day would be used for self-education. But how and by whom was it to be organized? By a worker himself? Well, an experienced worker, locksmith, engineer, would have to know methods of education, sources of the subjects he was interested in. It doesn't go without it. So, the statistics of the time budget showed that the time for self-education had sharply reduced in 1970s, comparing with the 1960s and a seven-hour workday. Then, let's take manufacturing and social activities. If we take the number of participants of production conference, there was such a form of workers' participation in management when they met at free time to discuss reserves of production. The number of such workers reduced in 70s, comparing the 60s and the 7-hour workday. As for the rest, hard drinking increased. It's clear, because workers' state became worse, this continuous labor pushed people to doze away, etc. Remembering those times, I understand the explanation of this fact. In the middle of 1980s, I was a strong, cheerful young man. Brigades, or key forms of work organization, were introduced that time. I read a lot of literature and found out that it had been widely accepted in the USSR from the beginning of 1930s in various forms when there had been a seven-hour workday. So I decided to share my knowledge with my comrades. The district committee of Komsomol organized a meeting with young workers, members of those brigades in the House of Labor in Leningrad. Young workers came to the house, though it felt that it wasn't habitual for them. They were wearing suits, ties, looking very nice to see. So I started speaking. It wasn't so short, and I saw what was starting to happen. Those guys started pouring vodka under the tables. Why so? Maybe it wasn't interesting. But the fact that the people had an opportunity to drink because they had left work earlier showed how the people had been tired since their younger years. And what had been happening to older workers. That was the situation. So what shall we get if we do it again? It'll be the same. Dear specialists of the Ministry of Labor and Social Development, and dear Prime Minister, in Soviet times every enterprise had a developed sphere of after-work sanatoriums, rest homes, that in some ways let her rehabilitate state of health of workers after such hard-working days. And now it's gone. Some pieces are left and either it rots or have been turned into village houses after the privatization. Or prices are so high that a worker can't afford it. What is going to be done will result in more serious consequences than it was done in the end of 1960s due to the Russian experience. This is a harmful arrangement. We must establish this fact. So that's the scientific assessment due to theoretical means and the analysis of the experience, the compression of a 40-hour working week. I should say that clearly the author of this idea and those who discussed it feel uneasy that somehow they need to mask this purpose or to justify themselves, to show their solidarity with workers. It's done by members of the Federation of Independent Trade Unions of Russia. There's such a man, Alexander Sharshukov, vice chairman of the Federation, an intelligent person, 
but he doesn't know the works of representatives of the Working Academy Fund. You can find only these works if you want to know anything about this matter, just because other authors research other questions, finances, etc. He always comments these measures, saying that we need to reduce working hours, or we need to use something to reduce them, with such a sad face, as if it's something bad for people. Why does he look like that if he says something good? He understands that, as Shershikov, as an ex anarcho syndicalist as a radical trade union activist who works with communists side by side. The reduction of working time is a good thing, but as the vice chairman of the federation he won't be let do it. And really, he plays to soften this measure that will result in the working week compression and workday increase. His opinion will remain, and he'd say that he spoke about it. This tactic was chosen, you can't believe, by Andrei Isaev, also an ex anarcho syndicalist who used to be with the communists wearing a red flag, maybe even a black one. He was first to remember Marx, that the wealth of society is its free time. When you see such performances, an analogy with a child molester acting for progressive pedagogical principles appears. That's so because exactly Saif really harmed working class, trade unions, signing and agreeing with all unpopular measures, including the increase of pensionable age, for example. Okay, Marx was right, and it's good that Saif remembered it. But what's next? In the end, he said that workers had fought for the reduction of work time, for an eight-hour workday, and there always had been arguments against it, and he finished saying that he believed that a four-day work week would happen. But, Mr. Saif, how many working hours a day will be then? Why don't you say that you believe that we'll have a four-day working week, if only with an eight-hour work day, though what is so progressive in it? You want to take one workday away, but the work time remains the same. Where's the progress? Nothing to do. It's their position. Somehow they need to be with workers, and at the same time, to carry out the master's will, the main employer of our country, I mean the state. Here are some more comments on the consequences. Anishinka, ex-chief health officer, said that people would drink much. Isaev attacked him, saying that you must not treat the people as fools. If not reducing a workday, but increasing it, the people will drink, of course. They need to black out from this constant, unbearable stress somehow. We have to agree with Anishinka. There will be divorces. Also, demographers say so, and we have to agree. Because if you break families for four days, and then for three days you'll join people who have forgotten their members of family, their children, the families won't be strong. There will be conflicts because one day will be spent on recovery and two days on vodka. That's why demographers are right, such optimists about opportunism, as Lenin used to say. Well, such optimists play a very harmful role, meaning this bad measure, and we have to agree with those who say that the negative consequences will prevail. They say that there's a good point that we'll go to work fewer times. But, dear comrades who want to go to work fewer times, how will we go to work these 10-hour work days with extended work? What time will we wake up? What time will we be home? I think that the situation will be like that. A new business will be launched next to entrance checkpoints, hostels, and you'll live there for three days. It's hard to get back home, especially if you live in the suburbs of Moscow. It's unreasonable to come home for four or five hours. Just stay in Moscow and live there. And you'll cut down road expenses staying in a hostel next to the entrance checkpoint, and you'll reduce loss of time. That's nice. You'll get barracks or hostels, up to date speaking. Do you want it? Is that useful? 
we must give up this idea. It's no good. If you don't want it, you must fight, and you must have fought before. It's not too late at your enterprises against reduction of the staff, throwing out workers, making them going to the suburbs or further to north, to Kamchatka, to work shifts. It destroys everything, families, health and productivity and so on. So that's the assessment asked by Dmitry Medvedev. No need to wait for the 30th of September. Dmitry, here's for you from science, practice, a trade union activist, because I am a consultant of the Russian Workers' Committee and the best activists say there how it'll be and how it is now to work 10 and more hours a day. Grigory Bobinov, the head of a primary organization of a doctor's trade union действие, have good speeches, he knows it quite well. This assessment is not enough. Now we must take a political assessment. Here it is. I don't know any political party that has made it. Some politicians spoke their pros and cons, but we need to choose the general line. I'd like to introduce to you the assessments made by the Central Committee of the Working Party of Russia. We put it to the vote, found all comrades, workers first of all, by means of phone and email, who voted unanimously for it, and we got this decision. To keep and reduce a workday, declaration of the Central Committee of the Working Party of Russia. It's known that in Russian economy the necessary time, the time a worker spends on making a product that is equal to his wage, is about 40 minutes. Thus, an 8-hour workday with a 5-day work week that was put in force in the middle of the last century in our country is excessive long ago. Over incomes as a result of over exploitation are sent out of the country and contribute to criminalization of the economy. On the other hand, Workers are lack of time for comprehensive development, their health is ruined. The Working Party of Russia advocates steadily, putting in force a six-hour workday with a five-day work week without reducing wages. It will improve social atmosphere and productivity. Productivity of office workers will not decrease at all. Productivity in a unit of time of workers will increase. Seeing positive feedback of workers on this proposal, the bourgeois government and its supervised trade unions decided to strike back, making a workday longer. At that, they throw the workers an additional weekend. Further workday increase will result health problems, and an additional weekend is no help and low wages will turn to long-time work on weekends. At the same time, the labor code, limiting the number of working hours a week, gives all opportunities to fight for days' work time reducing. Workers have an opportunity to set a six-hour workday without preliminary permission, having started to strike and set a six-hour workday during it. At first, it will turn to some financial loss for time workers, but later the rate of wage will normalize and a six-hour workday will be set. Labor will be more expensive, the more so as workers should not work more than eight hours a day, whatever laws would be adopted by the bourgeois government. Workers are always stronger than employers if they act competently and together. It's time for workers to feel their power. The Central Committee of the Working Party of Russia. Here's the political assessment of this measure. I think that there's no any other party which could be so closely tied with the working class, which could have such progressive, conscious, strong workers as its members. So you'd better pay attention to this declaration. This declaration is especially the voice of the working class in the persons of its conscious representatives. A four-day working week doesn't go. Meanwhile, the work time question arises again. Here, in this declaration, we speak about the adoption of a six-hour workday. People ask many questions about it. They are scared that production might be ruined by a six-hour working day, and they'll lose some wages. In capitalist world, if you don't lose some part of your wage, then profit will be lost. 
your enterprise will go bankrupt and everything will be ruined. I'd say that it's not just workers' idea. A worker doesn't give ideas in the modern society divided into intellectuals and workers. Workers share ideas floating in the intellectuals' minds. Our role intellectuals four or six work day here. Do all intellectuals think that the motto to live well you must work more is stupid or out of date? Not at all. Most of them really share this motto. But I don't blame them, still I am an intellectual myself. I understand that an intellectual is a broad definition and an intellectual with lots of knowledge in computing can speak about a lot of things in his sphere one could not understand. But beyond it, we are all slaves and victims of this division of labor, including the intellectual one. If you are interested in something and nothing else, then you'll have on your mind just what's given to you. Such a primitive idea. So let's not criticize those workers who are not in a hurry to realize the slogan of a six-hour workday without reduction of wage. More explanation is needed, no doubt. I was convinced of that at the Congress of the Confederation of Labor of Russia, where I met Oleg Shein, the only one deputy from trade unions. I don't consider Isaev as a representative of trade unions, though Oleg Shein has problems too. So I asked Shein to do something good, to introduce to the Duma the bill of a six-hour work day. I didn't hope that deputies would vote for. I hoped that it would turn to public resonance. People would be interested in it. Workers would begin actions and it would be legitimated. People would go on strikes working six hours only. Shane said that he needed serious estimations. Nothing to do. He is a serious man. He needs estimations. We must remember that Shane is known as a man who supported the project of the Labour Code written by specialists of the Working Academy Fund. This project included a 7-hour workday and a 35-hour work week. That time Shane didn't need any bases and today he needs them. Maybe he became older to doubt about slogans that workers had always been fighting for. I think it's not about Shane. People need to be sure that the world won't be destroyed by a six-hour workday. Let's take an example. We have a plant that manufactures some goods. Here's a table on your screens and I'll comment it. Here we see that the plant produces 800 items of goods and 8 man hours are spent on it. Labor productivity is one item per hour. A workday lasts 8 hours, as it's now, though we won't find it in the code, but it's considered to be normal. Workers are 100. It's easy to calculate the value produced by 100 workers. 100 men are multiplied by 8 hours and by one item per hour. It'll be 800,000 rubles. One item costs 1,000 rubles. Let's assume that costs for materials, amortization, etc. are 480,000 rubles. Wage fund is 160,000 rubles. The average wage is 1,600 rubles. Profit is 160,000 rubles. Profitability ratio of profit and cost for materials and wages is 25%. 
Here are the input data of a plant. There's no need in a real plant to understand these mechanics. Now let's take that labor productivity has increased as a result of realization of new technology by 30%. Productivity is 130% comparing with the starting state. What will we change in our table? And we also suppose that not all the rise of productivity is used to increase the product yield. A part of it is used on production and another part is used on reduction of work time. Some enterprises plan reduction of labor intensiveness. What will change? According to these suppositions, if we use a half of the growth of productivity on increase of production and the other half on reduction of work time, we'll get 910 items of goods. 110 items more. Work time will be 70 hours or 12.5% less. You don't have to work the same time considering the productivity growth. Productivity has increased by 30%. Workday has been reduced from 8 to 7 hours. That's what we spoke in the end of 1990s and 2000s, proposing a 7-hour workday. So the workday has decreased by 25%. The cost of production measuring in money has increased by 110,000. Cost of materials and the wage fund have also increased. The costs of materials have increased more than the wage fund. And it corresponds to what Marx said, that a part of constant capital grew more than a part of variable capital did. The average wage has grown by 9.4%. The profit has grown by 21 and 9 percent, and the profitability has also grown by 2 and 3 points, or by 9 percent. So we have a reduction of a work day, the same employment because no one worker has been fired. We see growth of wages by 9 and 4 percent. And it's higher than the tempo of inflation. Thus, we are speaking about the growth of real wages, and the profit has grown even higher. According to this example, the condition of workers has become worse comparing with the condition of a capitalist, because the wages have grown less than the profits. But our workers think that it's a measure that will ruin everything. Dear comrades, you may check this example, but it shows that it is possible when a workday reduces and wages grow, and profit and profitability grow. You cannot run with a hare and hunt with a hound. Such compromise is possible, but it's not a good compromise, because as you can see, the condition of workers has become worse, comparing with the condition of a capitalist. The workday reduction is a tremendous social winning, but it's not all for the working class struggle, as we understand. Okay, but we are speaking about a six-hour workday, so what will change if we take it here, in the same conditions? The production has grown by 110 items as before. Work time has been reduced by 100 hours or by 25%. The productivity has grown by 30%. What will happen to the employees according to these changes? A workday lasts for 6 hours instead of 8. 
has been reduced by more than a quarter. Due to such conditions, to keep the same production resource, 17 workers more have to be hired. It shows that scientific and technical progress is not an enemy to employment. According to this example, if we utilize these facilities, we'll increase employment. But the reduction of a workday up to six hours is a necessary condition for that. There will be no unemployment here. Here I'll say more. We have a federal program here called Guaranteeing Growth of Productiveness and Affirmative Employment. It's meant that with growth of productiveness, the state is to give a job to those fired thanks to the growth. In a few years, 70% of fired workers will be able to get a job. It's set on the program that people must be fired. Why not setting a six-hour workday on the program? Because there will be no need in affirmative employment. Where to find more workers? That will be a problem. Because if work time is reduced faster than production resource, then there will be lack of labor force. It means that no unemployment will be there, and then we'll be able to reduce a workday due to the reduction of production resource to balance it. Well, the program will be useful adding workday reduction to it. The cost of production will grow. The costs of materials will grow. Wage fund will grow by 18%. The average wage will grow by 1 and 5 percent, and the profit will grow by 12 percent. The profitability will be reduced by 0 0.3 points. So, the reduction of a workday up to 6 hours with the growth of productivity by 30 percent, utilizing it to increase unit capacity and to reduce production resource, will increase the profit faster than wages. But it's not a good example, because wages will grow slower than prices. It's obvious that workers will have to do something to redistribute profit, so that if the profit grows by 7%, then the wages will grow by 7% too. As we are social partners, so it must be profitable for all. Anyway, this example shows that a six-hour workday doesn't ruin production at all. Entrepreneurs don't lose profit. You need to fight for it. How to fight? It's easier to say than to do. How to accomplish a progressive task? How to accomplish a hard task in science, for example? It's hard, because you need to think and to do much to solve it. There are no easy tasks in life to accomplish. If you accomplish easy tasks, you don't develop. And we develop accomplishing hard tasks, setting a six-hour workday, and including it into a collective agreement are also hard tasks. The definition of that is simple due to what has been said. It goes like that. With decrease of labor intensiveness of productivity, reduced duration of a work day for a worker, duration of a shift, due to the decrease of the labor intensiveness, ensuring growth of real wages at the same time. All of these calculations all of this giant experience of fighting and researches at one enterprise could be said in one phrase. Of course, this statement needs to be fought for, and thus it'll change the life of workers for the better. But you may say, my God, we don't know what a collective agreement and a trade union are. We have no time to think of that. We don't want it. If you don't want it, you'll get the following. Let's see what happens to workers if they don't fight for a six-hour or a seven-hour workday in the circumstances of growth of labor productivity. Here's the third table. 
All the data are the same as before. The productiveness has grown by 30%. The production resource has decreased by 100. And the workday remains the same, 8 hours. What will happen? 12% of workers will be fired. Wage funds will be reduced. No need to pay the fired. Such an economy for a capitalist. The average wage will grow by zero. You don't have to raise wages to the people who give up everything, who are ready for everything, not to be fired today, but they'll be fired later due to the next growth of labor productivity. What's about the profits? It'll rise by 43 and 3 percent and the profitability will rise by 34.8%. Dear comrades, do you understand what happens if you don't fight? Thus, all the results of scientific and technical progress will be taken by a capitalist. It's hard to charge him with greediness, because it comes to him itself. Of course, he is able to calculate. With a 6-hour workday, the profit decreases by 12%, but if he fires 12% of workers, the profit will grow by 43%. It comes easily to him. Imagine that you are a capitalist. Will you give up your profit? The growth of your profit will decrease by 3 times if you present workers with a 6-hour workday. So, if your comrades and you don't want to be fired, because new facilities will be utilized in two years, you must fight, because a capitalist won't reduce his profit by himself, and he won't agree with the reducing of growth of this profit by three times. That's a matter of fighting, we can't blame him. The question is not what he does, but, dear workers, it's what you don't do. You don't stand up for your interests. You let yourself be shorn as sheep, and sheep are to be shorn. But you are human beings. The whole of the country stands thanks to you, and you let to be treated as sheep. It doesn't go. It's time to become angry with you first of all, because capitalists do their own business. They are not going to give up profit and become angry with themselves. It's time to come to your senses, to come to your dignity. Don't let be pushed around for their sake. They'll take everything from you and throw you away. It is you who make progress, you. It's your work, your ideas, and you are thrown away. Can you let it? What is so good and holy in it? Nothing. It's just a result of greediness of one part of the labor relations. Where are your interests, your position? You're fighting for your interests. You're like a flock of sheep guided to slaughter. You're not sheep. Our people proved it. They wanted to enslave us. Ten millions of our soldiers died fighting against it. They wanted to save our people so that they wouldn't be enslaved. They were heroes, especially comparing with what happens now. Today's workers can't fight for wages and a workday. I'd say that it's time to become angry with ourselves. It's not only about us. We've lived our lives. I saw better times. I got brilliant education for free. I had a scholarship higher or close to the average wage. All the people say that they have lived their lives. What about our children? How will they live? Will they become a flock of sheep of slaves who work hard from morning till night and cannot rehabilitate themselves for the rest of the time, and then they will go to endless work killing them again? Do we really want it for our children? It's time to rise up. Particularly, we have everything to make the situation better. We have science. Read our books, that are not so many. It's easy to understand them. We can see progressive examples in the sphere of trade union fighting, progressive collective agreements. We have the Russian Workers' Committee, where you can share the experience of fighting and work out the strategy of fighting for your interests. Come to Nizhny Novgorod. 
There will be the next conference in October. It's easy to find us. Just type in a search engine the Russian Workers' Committee of the Working Academy Fund. Moreover, it's needed to support the Working Party of Russia that wrote down the requirements to its program long time ago. And we didn't just write it down. We do what we can to realize it. Join the party. When you feel support of your comrades, problems that can be solved alone become easier to be solved. Frankly speaking, I'd like to finish my speech with an optimistic statement. The summer there was a party convention where I met new comrades. They are so strong and intelligent workers. They speak so well without any uneasiness because they understand that they speak not to show off but to express their interests, to direct the party to fighting for these interests. We see a Netflix of qualified, mature, intelligent, strong, unbreakable people to the party. When we have more such people, these problems, discussions, assessments will seem to be just a nightmare. We'll just laugh at them, because the life will go the way of the working class. A workday will be reduced, free time will be increased, workers and their families will develop, and other employees will win on the on development of the working class. Our life will be better, and then we'll solve more serious tasks. We'll win if we solve this problem radically. So I call those comrades who understand what moment we go through now to act actively, and it was said how to act before. All the best to us in our common struggle for the reduction of a workday.